Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about uh, different web technologies or something related to your domain names. So if you are a web developer or if you are a software developer, you would have definitely come across terminologies like A records, NS records, CNAME, MX and different things. In today's video, we'll see in detail like what those are and how exactly do they define on this internet technologies world. The first thing that we are going to talk about is going to be your DNS. So DNS is nothing but your internet database. That's the place where all of your uh, IP addresses are going to be like uh, stored with the name of an uh, easy to remember name. So we call these as like domain names. So all these domain names ends with your uh, top level domain. We call them as like TLDs. That could be your uh, .com or .org or .net and stuff like that. So each domain name would have uh, something like uh, an example.com or it could be uh, uh, google.com or yahoo.com or something like that. So anything that ends with the .com, so that .com is going to be your TLD. The next thing that comes to your mind is going to be your DNS records. So that's going to be your uh, IP addresses. So each domain, if it is going to be google.com, they're all going to be like interlinked with another uh, IP address in the back end. That's going to be easier for us to remember. So the DNS is going to be a combination of um, your domain name as well as the TLDs along with the uh, exact uh, whatever the IP address is. So for us to easily remember the IP address, we go with the, con uh, the concept of domain naming each and every IP address. So what happens when you type in a domain name? So when you type in a domain name, the IP address uh, goes through an internet um, cache database. So the DNS cache on your local computer is like first searched if this domain name is existing. If the domain name is there and if it is like resolved, it will automatically send a query to the DNS resolver. That's going to be your main ISP, the internet service provider from whom you've got the internet connection. So once the DNS resolves your IP address, it will automatically connect you to the respective TLD. If it is going to be a um, google.com, then that is going to be resolved and automatically a result is going to be sent back to you. In the back end, the IP address is going to be obtained and a connection is going to be established with this such a server. And once the DNS is like all set up, the data transfer happens and you happen to see the main page of google.com. So this DNS plays a very crucial role in your internet uh, terminologies and that's like a, a machine readable IP address is automatically translated into a domain name. That's how the DNS is going to function like and that's how the normal architecture of your internet thing works. So this internet thing is going to be with your concept of IP address. So the IP address in olden days were all like IPv4 where we used to have like uh, four digits of uh, address lengths of our IP addresses or numbers. So they were all like in 32 bit and we had a limitation of only 4.3 unique uh, devices that could be connected. That's the limit of addresses or the devices that can be connected. But with new enhancements in technologies, we started going up with the 128 bit uh, in comp a nomenclature where we could have like uh, 340 and more billions of data or devices that could be connected. So we call them with the name as IPv6. So your IP address on uh, version four could be like 192.168.0.1, that's the sequence or the series that how it starts. Whereas on the case of your IPv6, it's going to be like a longer IP. It's going to be like four numbers on each of that, followed by eight specs, like eight um, counts. So that's going to be like a longer way and you're going to have like over 340 billion counts of uh, connected devices into it. Then the IPv4 is going to be like uh, easy to, uh, uh, it's going to be like a 40 bit uh, data transfer. It's going to be like the data bytes is going to be just going to carry only 40 bytes. Whereas your IPv6 is going to data transfer like even more. That's going to like transfer more of data into it. Then coming to security, IPv6 is going to be like more secure and uh, more sturdy when compared to your IPv4 connections. Nowadays, the deployment of IPv6 devices also has started up because with a lot of new tech devices and technologies happening around, that's also has got started up into your um, device implementation or in your IP address mark range. So the first thing that we're going to see here is going to be your A record. So the A record is nothing but your IP address or the name that corresponds to your domain name. So each uh, domain name is going to be connected to your IP address. That's going to be your IPv4. That is connected to your hosting. That's going to be connected to your server company. So each domain will have an IP address for sure. That's going to index like where exactly the files of your web server are going to be stored. So normally the files are going to be stored inside your htdocs folder. And when an IP address or like a record is going to be pointed to a specific IP range, which means that's a computer which is existing on the internet and those files are going to be hosted under that. For example, if you're going to type in google.com or example.com and that corresponds to an IP address of 192 or like 0.2.1, then that IP address a record is going to be for the domain example.com. And that would be like automatically loading up the files that belongs to example.com. 
And here in this example, if you happen to see, I'm going to a lot of domain names here, and I'm going to click on this domain name. And if I happen to click on see the uh, domain settings, you'll be able to see that uh, this domain um, is at GoDaddy. There are a lot of domain service providers, so you could uh, register your domain from uh, um, GoDaddy.com or Bluehost or SiteGround or there are so many uh, service providers. So I'm using GoDaddy here, but the uh, the interface may be different, but the concept is the same universal across any service provider. So the first thing that I do here is like I'm going to my domain name. The first thing that I see here is your uh, A record. So that's the most important thing and that it's pointing to an IP address here. So that is going to be taking up a value of at. So the at here refers to anything that is like related to the domain that is automatically going to like if it is going to be an at which means like anything in the in front of your um, this domain name a to z technologies.co.uk that's going to be like automatically loading from here or whatever is like going to be a prefix of this. So anything and everything related to this is going to be like loading from this IP address. And there's something called as TTL, that's the DNS uh, thing that's going to be sent to the server and how it's going to like return back from there. So I'm giving a DNS buffer time of like 600 seconds, that's how much time it's going to take for the data transfer. So the next thing that I'm going to use here or uh, see here in my domain name is going to be your NS. So the NS is nothing but your uh, name server record. So the name server record specifies which DNS servers are like authoritative for using a particular domain. Say for example here it shows like ns63.domaincontrol.com this belongs to the name server of GoDaddy. So GoDaddy's name server has been used here. The same way you could see the TTL for that as well. So if you register a domain name with a domain service provider or GoDaddy or it could be any service provider, the DNS are normally provided by them. And the domain name stays with the same registrar. And if at all you are planning to host these files into another hosting company, you can just change the A record value of that and the files will start loading from the other company. However, if you wanted to move your entire domain name from GoDaddy to another host, you need to change the NS value itself directly of the new hosting company so that the domain will still stay here. However, the domain's NS records, name service records will automatically take from another service provider. Say for example, you want to change this to a registrar.com or siteground.com or any service provider. We just change this IP value here, which is going to be like NS63 and change it to another service provider to whom you are going to change your NS values as. And if at all you want to transfer the entire domain itself from this hosting to another company for some reason, if you're not happy with this service provider, we have another option where you could transfer the domain itself from this hosting company to another hosting company. So these name server records are very crucial for resolving the domain names to IP address. They are the ones which are going to connect your uh, uh, IP addresses with your domain name. So when someone is typing in a uh, request to your IP address, so their DNS is going to be automatically resolved and this authoritative name server is going to specify the NS for this domain name in like seconds. So that's the TTL which you're going to like be specifying there. And it automatically starts resolving from that name server, like whatever informations are there. So these name servers could take all of your information. It could take your text value. It could take your MX records, which we're going to see in the next part of the video. So the next thing that we're going to see is going to be your MX record. So the MX record stands for your mail exchange record. So this is going to be associated with every domain name. If at all you are planning to have a domain name from your hosting service provider, we call that as your cPanel email ID. So every hosting company, they give you a mail serving service. So the mail server service will be from their default servers. So the MX record specifies the mail servers that are responsible for receiving the email on behalf of the domain name. Say for example, you have gmail.com. So the MX of Gmail will be like responsible for receiving all the emails. So if you want to receive emails from this specific Gmail servers, then we use the MX values of them. So in this example below, you could see here that the MX values of uh, um, Google is going to be like with the values as seen below in this example. You could see that like the value stated here is with like three different values are there where I'm going to give a value as uh, ASP1, ASPMX.Google.com. So there you could see the MX value, I'm giving the value as like one. Then I'm, you could see the example again as like five and 10. That's going to be called as the priority of this. Say for example, you have your emails uh, from your hosting provider itself and you wanted to give, you wanted to like move all of these emails from this host to another company. Say for example, you want to change from GoDaddy to uh, Gmail, to the G Suite ID, or you wanted to go with Outlook.com or any other service provider. So the main priority is going to be like MX0. The MX0, which is like uh, whoever is like giving you the MX value, they are going to be the one which is being responsible for your send and receiving of your emails. The other emails are just going to receive your emails. They're just going to be like keeping
picking up a copy of it or it's going to be like a loop of it. So the MX records are like very essential for your email delivery. So whenever you see your mails are not working or not being sent, always do watch out like what the MX records are and like how they are going to have the priority of it. So make sure that your MX0 is like pointing to the right IP address, like whatever you are like planning or from who you, whom you have taken up the service. So when someone is like sending you an email address, so it looks for the domain name, then the email address will automatically look for the MX record as well and it will calculate the value like what is going to be the MX uh, priority like zero being set as and whatever, who, whichever like service provider has been set to that, the mail will be automatically delivered to that particular uh, mail server. And the others will be like kept a loop of it or like mail forwarding is another concept which is there as well. We can keep a copy of mail to this main server and another copy would automatically be sent to another email address as well. So the priority plays a very vital role here and you need to always keep a watch on like what is going to be the priority of your MX record as well. In this example, you will be able to see that I don't have any mail server in this domain name. So the MX for this like account is like nothing. There is no MX on this at all. As I said earlier, you could see here there's a forwarding option here. You will be able to forward the entire domain name itself to another company. Then you've got like your name servers as well, where you can point your name server to another hosting as well. Here you could see that uh, this name server belongs to uh, GoDaddy. When I click on change name servers, I'll be able to move this domain or port this domain from here to another hosting service provider itself. And uh, forwarding is another option where you can forward this entire domain name to load from another hosting company. So the next thing that we're going to see here is going to be your C name record. The C name record is again another important thing on your domain name. That's going to be like, it's, it, we could call that as an alias. So this alias is going to be uh, something that's going to be referenced with your domain. We call, could be like uh, gmail.com. This will automatically load when you type in HTTP S followed by gmail.com. That's going to be how the domain is going. But we add a prefix of www as well. So that is something like a subdomain of gmail.com. And that could be uh, set or possible only with the help of a C name. So that's the one which often points to a domain's name server, like where exactly is your website being hosted. So if your website is hosted at uh, www.example.com and you can access the same from example.com as well, you need not add up the www to it. So because the C name would be automatically set to that www folder, which is going to be your main folder. So you could see here in this example that the C name of this domain is automatically being set to www. So this will automatically add up the triple uh, w to it automatically instead of me adding and not typing in every time. So by default, we set the C name to this uh, main um, uh, www root folder. Say for example, you have another uh, mail server being set up or if you have like a subdomain being set up, then we create subdomains for this, like we create up alternative subdomains to that where C name could be added up for the other names as well and we add up the uh, a canonical name for that as well. So the C name records are like commonly used for aliasing subdomains. So instead of just adding www every time, we just add up with the uh, uh, C name automatically in the domain name settings so that it automatically redirects these a to z technologies.co.uk. When you type in on the browser, a prefix of www gets automatically added up to this. And if at all you wanted to add up another subdomain or some other name in front of this, this will automatically get added up into it. So by default, this will automatically get added to the root of the domain. That's going to be your apex domain. So which is going to be like uh, this domain a2ztechnologies.co.uk. If at all I want to add up like something like mail.a2ztechnologies or uh, it could be like uh, sales.a2ztechnologies, then all those has to be added up as specific C name records into your domain name settings. In this example that this domain connect has been added to the C name. So this domain connect is nothing but the service provider by GoDaddy. So they give this domain connect feature where you could automatically add up or they automatically redirect you to the uh, default holding page or the temporary page, whatever they have here. So when you enable this, when, you have, when I'm going to disable my values, it will automatically start pointing up my data from this particular C name whatever it is this setup here, like whatever is going to be the contents inside your domain connect value, that's going to show up from there as well. So the next thing that I'm going to have here is going to be your text values, the TXT value. So the TXT value plays a very crucial role in your uh, domains, uh, setting up your SSL values, or if you're going to point your mail servers to another host provider, if you're going to configure your email to G Suite, or if it is going to be your Outlook and stuff like that, we add up a uh, TXT value as well to your domain names. So that helps you to automatically plot up your uh, emails or your name service providers into your IPv4 or IPv6 and stuff. This also helps you to like uh, prevent your email service from spam attacks and stuff. So all your DDoS attacks and all of those values are going to be taken care of your firewall with the help of your firewall. So they will be providing you a text value. So we add those text values also into this domain name settings. I don't have this in the setting here. However, that's uh, something which is provided by your uh, um, 
spam preventer or it could be from your uh, CDN provider. They all provide you with some text values that will automatically point the domain name to such a service provider as well. So these are some of the things which we saw in today's video where we saw something like what is an A record and how an NS functions and what a C name is and what are MX records. And if you have any doubts on this video, do reach me out and I'll be happy to answer on this. And if you have, um, if you like this video, do share it with your friends and uh, do subscribe to this channel and I'll catch you up in the next one. Thank you.